again. And as soon as I touched the strain, my face, my, my fingers burned me. And I'm like, what is happening? And I looked at my hand. <laughs> and when I looked at my hand, at that moment, I realized. What's going on, everybody? And welcome to the Pursuit of Excellence family. I'm Dara Williams, and I'm here to help you develop students' life skills, mindset, and character. And today, we're going to talk about something that you really, really need to know about. So in an earlier video, we talked about how to reward student growth. So go ahead and check that out if you haven't seen it. But what happens if students don't grow? Like, what happens if things don't go according to plan? I mean, couple that with the fact that district is coming down with mandates and, and admin is coming over for, with suggestions. And now we have students that are disinterested, parents that are over-engaged. We have all this happening at the same time. How do we not get overwhelmed as teachers? Well, today, I'm going to tell you a story about me, a bass guitar, and some callous fingers. And I'm going to break that down into three parts to let you know the three-part framework that you can use to make sure you don't get overwhelmed this school year. So first things first, I play the bass guitar. I'm not good at it. I'm not, <laughs> I'm just, just going to be honest with you. I'm not good at it, but I love to play it. So for me, I realized that if I really want to get good at something, obviously it's going to take practice. But if I just tell myself to practice, it may or may not happen. It's when I make a commitment to perform, that's when the practice happens. So I told my church that I will play for the choir. I'll play the bass guitar for the choir even though I wasn't good at the bass. But I knew that if I made that commitment that I would grow into the person that was capable of performing well. That's just how I work. So I made the commitment to play for church. So after I made that commitment, now I have to carry it out, right? So I'm practicing. So I ask for the songs and I'm practicing playing the notes and I'm trying to learn those riffs and I'm trying to learn the licks and I'm trying to make it all fancy and I'm trying to do everything and I'm practicing, practicing, practicing and we're getting closer and closer to the time that I'm supposed to perform with the choir. And the night before, I'm practicing, I'm practicing, I'm going, I'm playing the notes. I got my headphones on, I'm, my wife is upstairs sleeping, my daughter's upstairs sleeping, I'm trying not to make noise, I'm practicing, playing along. And then I go to touch the guitar, and it feels like the, like, feels like the bass guitar is on fire. <laughs> like, it feels like it's on fire, like, ah! And I touch it again, and as soon as I touch the string, my face, my, my fingers burn me, and I'm like, what is happening? And I looked at my hand, <laughs> and when I looked at my hand, at that moment, I realized, I realized I'm doing too much. There were calluses on my fingers. Literally, the skin on my fingers was breaking off, was tearing apart because I was practicing so much. And I realized I'm doing too much. So I decided I had to stop right there and think about next steps. And I said, see, what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to consume the whole buffet when actually all I need to do is chew on the bite-sized chunk that I can handle right now. So what I decided to do was I took out all the riffs, I took out all the runs, I took out the frills, and I just learned the bass line. And I showed up at church the next day to play, and I'm gonna tell you later how they responded. But let me break that down for you now. Let me break that down for you into the three parts so that you can use this three-part framework to not get overwhelmed this school year. The first thing I had to do was commit. First thing we have to do is make that commitment. I committed to playing for that choir. You have to commit to be that teacher that you want to be. You have to commit to being that teacher that grows students. You have to commit to giving students what they need, regardless of everything else that's going on. And even if you don't feel ready in the moment, see, when, remember, when I first started, I didn't feel like I was ready, but I knew that by making the commitment, I would grow into the bass player that was capable of playing for that choir. You may not feel like that teacher right now, but if you commit to saying, I will become that teacher, you are saying that I know that I'm capable of growing into the teacher that is capable of growing these students and showing up for these students every single day. So it starts with a commitment. And after you make that commitment, now you've got to carry it out. You've got to work hard, you've got to practice, but make sure that you're keeping your self-care first. See, I made that mistake. When I looked down at my fingers and realized that I had calluses, that's because I was doing too much. I was going too hard. I was putting my own physical well-being on the back burner in lieu of the mission. That's not necessarily what we're called to do. We need to make sure that after we make the commitment, we are gonna do everything that we can to grow into the person that is capable, but at the same time, we have to recognize that our self and our self-care comes first. They say it all the time in sports, your best ability is your availability. Like think about a football player. Your best ability is not the ability to throw the ball down the field, not the ability to juke somebody out, not the ability to tackle. Your best ability is your availability on Sunday. And it's the same thing for teachers. Your best ability is not your pedagogical approach. Your best ability is not your ability to build 
build relationships. Your best ability is not your classroom management. Your best ability is your availability to show up for students every day. And if you're overwhelmed, if you're overworked, if you're stressed out, if you're burnt out, you're not available to show up for those students every day. So make sure that your self-care is first. I know you want to be the best. I know you want to grind hard. I know you want to put the work in because you made that commitment and you want to grow into that person, but you got to make sure that you are not becoming overwhelmed by just focusing on what you can control. All right? I went too hard. I got calluses on my finger. I don't want that to happen to you. So what that means is you got to set some limits. Like I'm going to work as hard as I can until 4 p.m. and then I'm going to spend some time with my family. Yeah, I see your email. But I'm going to snooze it till the morning. You know, that's, that's my favorite feature. If you don't know about that, that is my favorite feature. Snooze till 8 a.m. I'll check on that tomorrow. It's okay. It is okay. So after you make that commitment and after you decide you're going to carry it out, the last thing that you have to do is chew. And right before I break down chew for you, before I get into the last phase, I want to let you know that in the description below, there is an article that links to 15 different tips to make sure that you don't get burnt out as a teacher. I highly suggest that you go down and check that out. I'm only giving you a three-step framework right now, but there are 15 tips in the description below. Go ahead and check that out. So the last phase is the chew phase. You got to chew. What does that mean? It means, listen, remember, the night before I was supposed to show up and play, I didn't feel confident in performing with all the licks and all the runs, but I knew that I could play the bass line. And that's okay. That doesn't mean that I was a disappointment. That doesn't mean that I'm a letdown. That doesn't mean that I'm a failure. That means that at this point in my journey, this is the best that I can do. And nobody can ask for better than your best. And when I showed up at church the next day and I played that song, it went so well. It did. Like, it went so well. We, I played along. I just played the bass line and the other instruments were playing and the choir sang amazing and it went well. But what would have happened if I showed up on that day and I was stumbling through the notes, right? If I was sloppily playing the riffs, if I was off key when I was trying to hit the runs, they would have looked at me like I was, I guarantee you I would have heard something about it. Right. But because I didn't focus on consuming the whole buffet, but rather just chewing on the bite sized chunk that I could handle right now, that's what made it a success. See, sometimes we look at everything that's happening and I get it because you want to be great. So so you want to listen to what's going on in district. You want to take the suggestions from admin and you want to listen to your colleagues and your coworkers and your coaches. But that's not what's going to make you great. What's going to make you great is just focusing on the bite-sized chunk that you can handle right now. Doing your best with that chunk and focusing on getting better every day. See, sometimes we think that we wanna to get to the finish line right now. We wanna hurry up and get there. I wanna take in everything all at once. But it's not about the speed of your progression. All that matters is that you're going in the right direction. Baby steps. Don't look at the whole buffet. Focus on that bite-sized chunk that you can control right now. Master it and focus on getting better each and every day. In the next video, we're going to learn about a framework for you to set goals throughout this school year. So subscribe so that you don't miss that. But in the meantime, check out this video right here that I mentioned earlier talking about how to reward student success. And I'll see you in the next video.